All right, let's get started in the action guide items for step six, where you have to get buy-in from administration. Now, of course, the number one thing that you want to do is meet with your administration, which most times is gonna be a principal of your school. So you've got to prepare for those meetings, have everything well laid out, and you're trying to make things as simple as possible. You're not trying to overwhelm your principal. You're trying to, in fact, take workload off of them by saying, listen, 21st century skills are needed in our schools, and let's just get, take care of this before it becomes mandated by the state or by the district. Let's really get proactive, I guess, about these things. So prepare well for those meetings. I don't know how you interact with your principal. You know that person best. So prepare really, really well so that when you go in for those three meetings, you have everything ready to go, especially when you meet with the teachers. Really be a positive uh, that this is going to work out great and that you're going to relieve the workload off of both administration and the teachers themselves. And trust me, it doesn't mean that it all goes onto your back and that you have all this work to do, but it'll make things better in the long run when you have all these great skills in your building. So that said, that's number one, prepare for those meetings. Now, the next thing I have on my list here in my book is that I want you to go to a website called weebly.com. Let me just go into there. Okay, now Weebly is a great place for free websites. And I'm going to give you the link to my uh, account that I use with Webly, Weebly just for my own personal class website. And I'm going to log in and show you how this works. So the next step, I guess, is to make a Weebly account. It's free. It has an education model. See, here's the Weebly for education. So it has a couple of different elements to it. And let me go down here to Mr. Flick's computer class. I'm going to edit my site. All right. So here is just my basic website here. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory how this whole thing works. You can go here to pages and add more pages. You can change your template to whatever look you want. And you can add multimedia items like photo galleries and files and these type of things. So I, I just have some basic pages here. So the reason I want you to get this account is if you don't already have a website. All right, get one. I This is the one we use for all of our teachers in our building. This works really good. Weebly is a fantastic way of, of being able to make a website because you can access it from anywhere you have uh, computer access. It's a web 2.0 tool. And I know there's lots of free websites out there. So if you've got one that works great for you, fantastic. But what I like about this is all the teachers do classroom news, which is essentially a blog. And every Thursday I try to do another blog. And so here, and one or two sentences, that's all I do. But imagine if you get into this and now you have your classroom website, when you go to ask teachers to do the same thing, they will see the work that you've been doing. All right. So here's my archives. My archives go back four months now because of working in my building to get my teachers kind of transposed over to using Weebly as their classroom uh, website. And it's a it makes beautiful websites. That's all I can say about that. So if you don't already have a website for you as a educator, go ahead make a Weebly account and it looks great. I'm just going to show you what mine looks like from the outside here. So let me just go to cflickin.weebly.com. All right, so there's what it looks like when you're on the outside uh, looking in. So if you want to ever see, you know, photos of what my kids are doing, here's, we just got through a big module on Lego We Do. So here's all the photos. And look at the gallery. So I can click on this gallery here. Pops up nice web 2.0 gallery and just hit the next button here. Goes through all these things beautifully. Okay, so that's Weebly. Again, if you don't have one, get one of those and start blogging on it. All right. Um, if you do have an atomic learning account, which I keep suggesting that you have, because it'll make your work so much easier, I want you to spend time, let me just go log into my atomic learning, in the 21st century skills part of this. Okay, so let's let this load up. All right, there's my account. Let me just log in. All right, so I'm just gonna click on the home button up here in the, the navigation bar and go down to 21st century skills. Let me just show you the power. If you've not already been in atomic learning, this is gonna just kind of blow you away. Not only can you find, uh, maybe I'll, I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so uh, let's look at 21st century skills. There's a teacher assessment, student assessment, and look at these concepts. This is where I really want you to spend some time in here before you meet with your, your principal. Go through these videos. Go through and take a look at them, especially under the, the concepts right here of all the different uh, 21st century skills. Look at, they're five minutes long, two minutes long, three minutes long. You can just kind of blow through these really quickly and 
understand deeply what's going on with 21st century skills out there. And then I want to show you one really important here, this infusing 21st century skills into your activities. I'm gonna open that up and just give you a kind of a peek at what they look like. So they just load up, it starts to play. The tutorials in the Atomic Learning 21st Century Skills Collection can contribute to a general understanding of 21st century themes and concepts, but putting these into practice may seem like a monumental task. How can you begin infusing your own activities with opportunities for students to practice and master 21st century skills? Okay, I'm going to close that. So if you have an account, definitely go through these 21st century concepts, especially the infusing one. Now, I've probably broken some copyright law showing you that little snippet, but let's hopefully that, that works out there. All right, so that's what I'm talking about there. So spend some time in there. I wanted to show you, um, I will be showing this in other steps, but how great this is as me as a tech person in the building. When you go in here to there, find an answer to a tech question, this is what saves me all my time, is that my teachers all have access to this. So when they need to learn how to do something, like let's just say Google Docs, Google Docs, they want to learn how to do something in Google Docs, and they need, of course, probably do a better question than I just did then, but how to maybe make a new spreadsheet, how to make a new documentation, all of these things. I've got 46 items under Google Docs. Look at all these here. So let's see, renaming a document, go into there and then again it opens up a, a screencast of how to rename a document. When you create a new document, Google Docs uses the first... See how quick that was to answer my question? So, saves me time. All right, but we're not here to talk about that. So uh, let's also talk about your assignment in here. So you've read in the 21st Century Skills book, you should have read that first section and uh, learned a lot more about 21st Century Skills. So the next assignment then is to, let me look at the table of contents here, definitely part two. So that's chapters three, four, and five. And please log into the uh, group that we have here in Google Groups and start participating in the forum about the book. So if you have questions or comments, interesting things, I mean, mine is just highlighted with all sorts of things I came across in that first section of things that just made me really think when it came to 21st century skills and the things that uh, I like, you know, look at charts and highlights, all these things. Uh, that I liked when I, when I was in here, uh, that I pulled out and kind of put into my notes. So that's, that's the other part. All right, um, let's take a look at the one page uh, tech plan. Right, I'm just gonna log into my Google Docs here. All right, uh, so sample school technology plan. Here, of course, is my editable document that you will see, just it's linked down below this. So yeah, you want this very simple for everybody to follow along. Simple goals, simple roles and responsibility. Who is going to do what? So it outlines it all. So it's not like, oh, that's not my job. No, this is what you have to do. And it's just great. So try to just distill it down to the just the simplest terms so we don't have a 60 page uh, technology plan. So that's really important. So use this as a framework and come up with your own when you meet with the principal. And then I wanted to also show you, let me close this here the six question assessment. And these are just from the uh, ISTE standards for teachers. And these a simple scale, one, two, three, never, sometimes, or all the time. And so when the principal sits down for an annual review with the teacher, it's, you know, do you use technology in your lessons to facilitate and inspire uh, student learning and creativity? And then, they're, they, of course, they've prepared to answer these questions. They're like, yeah, you know, I, I used um, Google Earth and we were able to go and explore all the things that we were studying about, about Egypt or those type of things. You know, so they just were using that kind of an idea to use technology to inspire student learning. And then it might, for creativity, I had the students do X, Y, Z using the computer. So those type of things, just very simple questions. Again, not drawn out to 50, 60 questions, but just six questions. And of course, the seventh one is here you know, what are you going to do to improve your score? So that every year the teachers are trying to build up their score. And of course, they'll get to a point where they have a perfect score. And then it's kind of, what are you doing to keep everything fresh? Those type of things. So that concludes the action part of step six.